Well, it is exciting uh, for everybody. You know, it's exciting for our football team and our players. It's one of those things where, you know, it's been a goal of ours, and we talk about this for years, and we've been close. We've been continuing to grow as a team and, and a program. Each year we've had, had success. But uh, each year we've, all, we've also said, you know, we want to be uh, shoot for the national championship. We've kind of passed the, the stage of we're going to play for the conference championship, and that is obviously one of our goals too. Uh, but we've got to the point where we wanted to we wanted to change that goal to the national championship, and not really realizing that uh, when it happens, you know, it's, it's still exciting. Although that's our goal, and it's been exciting for our team, our coaches, uh, and finding out it's exciting for everybody else too, which I knew it would. But you know, and more people have been calling alumni and. Uh, from all different uh, places. One's alumni that I've coached, you know, eight years ago, seven years ago, plus guys that played back in 85 through 88, you know, from the, when they first started football. So it's been uh, really, really a joy just to see all that and everybody kind of coming together. Um, and it is something that, that uh, I think our players have enjoyed the experience. But the good thing about this team is that uh, their, their goals have not been reached yet. So their ultimate goal is to win this ball game. Being there is one thing, but uh, I, think, I think we believe in this, and I think our senior leadership has been so strong that uh, they believe that we're the number one team ranked, and we want to end number one when this game is over. Well, that's, that's probably one of the reasons. A lot of people ask me about that and this level of football, and I talk about, you know, playing for the love of the game. You know, lots of players will go to a place, and uh, I say this, you know, I know, that, I know that part of their motivation is a full scholarship. I know a part of their motivation is to be at the Division I. And I've recruited players before. If they didn't go to Division I, they'd just go to school and, and go uh, be a student. Um, but here, these guys, uh, make sacrifices, tremendous sacrifices financially. They've taken out loans. They've, uh, they have maybe some of them have work study jobs, like you said, to help pay for school. And on top of that, they're part of a championship caliber football program, uh, which demands time, uh, effort, all those type of things. So it is. It's a. It's awesome to see, you know, that they can uh, receive some of these perks and uh, the championship game and all the things that go along with it, the media attention uh, to show how much these guys do lay on the line every day, uh, which, is, which is really good to see, like you said. Grandview has got a, got a great football team. Uh, they've been very dominant throughout their conference, which we've played two of the teams that they've played, so we've seen them on film a little bit prior to this game. Uh, when they played St. Ambrose and also St. Francis. Uh, but we've also seen that they're really strong on defense. They've got one of the top rated defenses according to points given up and total defense uh, in the country. Uh, their offense is very solid. They're able to make big plays. So it's going to be a challenge, I think, for all three of phases of our football game, offensively, defensively, and on special teams. Uh, which it should be. You know, they're the number two ranked team, and they're the only undefeated team other than us. So it's, uh, it's, it's kind of come down to the wire here. When you, when you st first start the playoffs, you've got number one and uh, number 16. And, you know, last year it didn't quite work out that way. Number one was Georgetown, and they were playing number 16. Well, they lost. Well, uh, not trying to rub that in on Georgetown. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying that it always doesn't work out that way where the number one team – and the number two end up in the finals, uh, which is exciting for us. And those type of things right there, you know, when we got down to the final four, it was one, two, three, and five, almost just like they had predicted it when they set the seeds, when they, when they ranked the teams. And so it's good to be ranked during the year. It's good to get that ranking, but sometimes it doesn't mean that that team's the number one team in the country. Well, it just so happened with the playoff system, uh, has worked itself out where um, it showed the number one and number two are rightfully so, number one and number two. Well, this, I'm glad there's two weeks this, this time for the championship. I really am, and I think our players are too, because 
all the things that go along with this, the setting up of the trip. That's one good thing about being at home and all the other games. We hadn't had to set up any trip. We hadn't had to make a meal reservation or a bus reservation. We've been right here at James H. Taylor Second Stadium, which has been awesome. And, uh, you know, we've been undefeated there for two and a half years, which would made us feel real good and confident. The next thing is, you know, uh, for this trip, though, there has been a little extra, not just the travel, but also uh, the media attention, the getting ready for the championship game. Uh, a lot of things go into it that – that's a little bit bigger than your average football game. So I'm glad we got two weeks. Uh, but the, once once we settle in and we have just a little bit, uh, our preparation will be pretty much the same. Well, 50-50 at least. Okay, well, somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose, and we've got a chance. I really feel good, though. I felt like our chances are really good, uh, mainly because of our players and the preparation that they've put in all year long. That's good. Uh, the confidence that our players play with, that's another thing that I really can't uh, describe. You have to see it yourself. Uh, these guys come out there and play every day, and, and when they're down, when they've been behind, uh, which we have been several times this year, um, maybe my confidence wasn't quite as good. Theirs was just the same as always, and they end up taking over the football game, continuing to work and, and not give up, and they just got really a lot of confidence in, in themselves. They got a lot of confidence in their team, and um, it shows on Saturdays. Losing players is going to happen each year. You've got some guys that have made a difference in our program and continue to grow, and we've won, won a lot of football games in the past. We've, we've won a lot of games. We've won 10 games in 2008. We won 10 last year and, and really were close. And I felt like we were, we were good enough to win the national championship those years. Uh, you know, when you, when you lose one, you've got to recruit another. And uh, we've got some players that we've replaced with, like our quarterback, Adam Craig. Uh, you know, his coaches told me, he said, Coach, you get him up there, you'll be playing for a national championship. And uh, they, they, were, they were right. He's, he's definitely a player. Uh, one of those things, what you, what you look at, you don't see until you see it on game day. And, uh, you know, not just his ability to run the football, not just his ability to make plays, but – uh, leadership ability. You know, when you think about the uh, doing that as a freshman, it's difficult to do uh, because the players don't really know who you are. The players don't uh, – it's a new kid on the block. Uh, you're going to have to earn your stripes, those type of things. And I think he's done that. We've, we've shown that through his running ability and also his leadership ability, uh, his chances to – it just gives us, you know, more and more chance opportunities to win football games with uh, a quarterback of that status. I'm going to tell you two ways. I know the kid can eat, okay? <laughs> I've seen him eat barbecue, and uh, when, we, when we say there's, there's two, he'll end up eating four and five. It's hard to keep count, so he, he may be growing physically too. But mentally, uh, you know, I knew Adam was really smart coming out of high school. He was number two in your class. That's right, number two. So that's way smarter than me already. And so uh, he was able to take everything in as we installed our offense. That was the biggest challenge because, you know, as a quarterback, learning the system is one thing, but being able to execute the plan is another. Executing the plan as far as – because we don't run the same exact offense he ran in high school. Um, he was able to run the ball in high school. He was able to throw the football in high school. But, but learning the option on top of that and pitching the football, that was something that I was really a little bit concerned about. And uh, Adam has picked that up, and we're running plays that uh, we have for years, and he's running them uh, unbelievably and being able to get the ball to our playmakers, uh, get the ball to guys like D'Angelo Jordan, Iquan Deed, all those guys, Willie Gibson, being able to uh, – you know, distribute the ball and also keep it and run it himself. Uh, but he's picked that up uh, big time fast. Coming in, you wasn't guaranteed a spot or anything and uh, just had to work hard for it. But all these seniors, they've really made it easy on me, uh, teaching me the, the, the ways. And uh, it's just been a fun ride and hope to continue it. Well, for me, it started at uh, McKendry. Me, uh, Hightower, and Kyle were on the sideline, and we said that we would change the program, and one day we'll get to the national championship. And from there, 
that's where it started for me. Oh yeah, coming in our freshman year, I knew uh, I knew we had a lot of um, athletes that were freshmen as well. Um, <clears throat> I've been in a uh, I've been on a team like that before in high school where we had a lot of younger guys. But I knew when, once I got up here, you know, we we were all young, but I knew we were kind of bought into the program and would stay here four years for the most part. And uh, I think that really helped us. I haven't really been able to look back, but I can already tell uh, it's unbelievable to have this kind of experience. Um, but you know, the O line, they've not gotten as much credit as they deserve. And they've made it so much easier. And all the backs, like D'Angelo, and um, all the backs, Willie, Rooks, um, it's just been amazing to have that kind of uh, that kind of a team around you. It makes it it makes it a lot easier. Well, I'm really not. I, I knew, do know this. Being at home has been great. It's been really good, and mainly because of travel. Uh, because when you go on the road. Uh, just like when Carol came in here, you know, they got in here Friday night, they didn't have much time, they, they got in the hotel, the next morning they're up and it is ready to play football. Uh, and that was, that's kind of tough. When we go down to Rome, um, we're going down there and we're going to be there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. When we get done, Rome's going to feel like home, you know what I'm saying? And so we're excited about that. And we're going to have so many, so many, so much support there, at least the, the people I'm hearing that are going. And of course, we've got a lot of players from the state of Georgia. We've got uh, players from the state of Tennessee. It's, it's so close so that, uh, you know, you have three and a half or four hour drive to get there. I think we'll have a really, really strong supporting cast in, in the stands, uh, which will make it feel like home for us. One good thing is this too, you know, as, as, the, as the year went on, our field, our field is grass. And we have some, uh, some weather issues, snow, sleet, rain, and uh, the field got slicker and slicker, and it's more difficult to keep our footing. Down there, it's going to be field turf, so the footing will be good. I think that's going to go into our advantage uh, because we've got a lot of speed. We've got guys who get on the corner and make things happen offensively. I think um, our defensively, you don't want to lose footing either. So I think our players will really, really enjoy that. Uh, we got on the corner a few times last week, slipped. I think we would have gained some more yards, those type of things. So I think it's going to be a good thing getting out uh, and playing on that, on that surface too. Well, these, these kids, uh, these young men have meant so much to this university, but also the people that are around, in, involved in the community. Uh, we get involved in community service a lot uh, in the off season mainly you know we go out and read to the kids we've got guys who who do some type of community service and they they're able to meet them well this stage right here is has taken it to another level just because more eyes are on these guys more eyes are on our coaches on our players than ever before and uh, you know we learn a little bit each week we have a devotion each week we had coach Matt Reimer talk to us we've had Tom Dowling talk to us Tim Bargo our, our team chaplain and we get a different speaker every week for the varsity especially Tim Bargo just texted me a little while ago and said is the JV devotion still on those JV guys don't get to come to all the meetings we get they don't get to see that so we'll have a devotion for them on the field before we go to practice today just because we have a devotion and just because we, we have a speaker every week doesn't mean we're going to all become the best Christians that, are, that there are. But, but one good thing is they get a chance to hear it, they get a chance to listen, they get a chance to, to hear someone speak from the heart, and uh, hopefully they'll take something with them. I think our players have. I think they have. They, we've got a great group. Uh, you know, like I said, when we go on the road, you kind of hear these type of things. When you're, when you're right here with me, I'll say good things about them all the time. You know, they're the best group of all times. But, but when you get on the road and you go to a restaurant, when you go to a hotel and, and the uh, manager says, that's the best group I've ever had, the best I've ever had, that's, that's what you like to hear. I think our defensive line is, is uh, they match up pretty well against them. I think uh, we have a slight advantage over the, the uh, defensive line, over their offensive line. Um, the running backs are uh, are pretty good. They got three of them. Um, I think the uh, quarterback and the receivers are their biggest uh, 
our biggest weapons. Um, our DBs and uh, our spies, stuff on the quarterback, are really going to have to step it up this week to stop their offense. What you're gonna have to do to beat this team is you have to be able to do both uh, pretty well because they're uh, they're pretty big up front and their defensive backs they uh, they run well and I think their strength is they they run to the ball <coughs> and gang tackle so I think uh, we're gonna have to keep them off balance by being able to run and pass. Well, whatever you ask me to do, I'm gonna get it done. Just that simple. <laughs> One of the things that I've seen, though, is this right here is, is our, uh, our running backs, our running backs and our quarterback, Adam Craig. Um, you know, we have had a great group with some talent. I mean, they can run, they can catch, they can block, they can do those things. But the best thing about them is they're unselfish because one game, like you said, D'Angelo may block the whole time and somebody else gets the ball. Iquan may be a blocker and D'Angelo's getting the ball or Adam's carrying the ball. Uh, Hunter Lewis and Daryl Cross and all those guys that have shared time, uh, but they're all blocking. And here's the way I like to think of it is this. I like to think that uh, they have an offensive lineman mentality. Offensive line is, is the most unselfish group because all they do is block. They never get their name in the paper besides what we're talking about right now. This is probably the most publicity they've gotten in a long time. But that's, the, that's what they do. They go out there and they block and they're unselfish. That's the way our running backs are uh, because it doesn't matter if they get the ball. And that's why we're successful right now, because of that mentality. And you try to keep the team morale up a little bit, but um, by, by giving them some touches, you know what? I, I'm not smart enough to do that in a ball game. I'm really not. If I start thinking about who am I going to get the ball to to make them happy, I'm, not, I'm just trying to get the ball down the field and, and uh, seeing what the defense gives at the end of the day. Uh, if D'Angelo had 25 carries or 28 carries, he got them. If, if Adam got the 20, you know, so and so on, and whoever touched it got it, we end up scoring points. Uh, I think that's most important, and that, that's uh, the thing I'm most proud of about this this group. Well, if you're a running back, you want to get the ball. That's obvious. It's, All right, <laughs> we'll keep that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> when, you, when you play on a team like this and everybody where the ball spreads out, I mean, it, it shouldn't matter who gets the ball. As long as we're executing, as long as we're winning, that's all that matters. Uh, we talked last night, and uh, he was just discussing uh, the defense and what, what we should do to, to stop him or whatever. Well, not stop him, but um, execute the game plan against him. And um, that's pretty much it. He, he talked about the linebackers about the DBs, he didn't say too much about the, the line. He said the offensive line has to just uh, get some movement. I mean, we talk every day, we, we pretty cool. So, I mean, we learn from each other. Uh, I think it, it's all gonna start up front with our offensive line versus their defense, defense line. And uh, <clears throat> I think there's gonna be chances to make plays. We just gotta make them. Well, he said it, the offensive <laughs> line, <laughs> the most important part of the offense. If we can get that movement and we get the ball, we execute score. Well, my, I did envision it. I did envision it. I saw that. I said, look here, that's what I hope for, you know. Uh, these guys right here, though, executing the plan and, and, and making sure we, we get those victories and the close games go our way, you know what? It's, um, it's uh, really exciting to see that happen. Um, these guys have been, uh, the good thing about it is, you know, I, I, I like to run the football as a, and play the, and, and when, you, when you call plays, I like to run it. I like to make, I like to score now. And uh, if it takes throwing the football and getting the big plays, we'll do it, and we do. Uh, but I like being able to run it uh, when, when, when the game is in hand and when we need to, uh, to run the clock out. When we don't want to get our defense back out there, I like to run it. And these guys, the thing that I've seen the, the most and I'm most proud of, of, of uh, during a game like we've seen in the last few weeks is we can run some plays over and over and over again. Now, Adam might not like that. And D'Angelo, they're out there going, Coach, could Coach call something else? Maybe. but Because uh, they know exactly where we're coming. And they still can't stop it. And I think that just goes down to your players 
uh, going out there and executing the plan. But football is a physical game. It is very physical, and that man against ours, and when the day is done, when four quarters of football is over with, you'd like to see our guys continue to drive and just run that clock out. Last week, I think, well, it might have been uh, uh, two weeks ago against um, St. Francis, seven minutes to go, and eh, they had a little bit of hope, and seven minutes was gone after one drive, and uh, we're able to take a knee at the end of the drive, just right at them. And so, um, you know, that's exciting, and I think that's, that's important. No, I've never been part of anything like that. It's my, actually my first overtime ever in my career. So, uh, I mean, it, it was awesome. It kind of just – the D-line D put a lot of pressure on him, kind of just made him, made him tunnel in to right to me. So, I mean, I say anybody could have made that play right there at that time. So, yeah, it was, a, it was an awesome feeling, though. Personally, it was probably the most exciting football moment uh, of my life. Uh, never been a part of something like that and hope to have it, have it happen again. It was great for me, too. I was sitting there on the sideline ready to go out on the field. Normally, I'll turn around and I'll get my headsets because they are, you know, they're brand new, okay? <laughs> and if I was Nick Saban or something, I might just throw them on the ground. We'll buy some new ones. But I thought, you know what, I better hang on to these. And we just bought them. And so I was going to turn around and give them to one of my assistants, <laughs> and they're all gone. So I was stuck on the sideline by myself and just turned around and watched it all happen. It was uh, pretty – Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. No. <laughs> I can say that right now. No. Oh, man. See, I went, I was a graduate assistant at Auburn, so that was pretty exciting for me. I was yelling to go score. And my wife was mad that an SEC team wasn't going to be in the championship. And I said, no, nope, they're going to make it. Auburn's going to make it. It's like I saw that happening. It, did work, it worked out. One of my good buddies coaches with Auburn too, though, Tim Horton, so very excited for him. Well, for me, it, honestly, it really hasn't. Uh, we talked about it in class. Some, some girls were talking about it in class, asking questions of, have we ever been to the national championship? And I was like, no. Uh, it was like, uh, you guys have all those rings. Where those come from? Like, those conference championships. So they didn't really understand that there's a conference, there's a national. And I was telling them that um, it won't really hit me once until once we get to Rome. That's when I really set in. I don't really think it's set on me that how big of a deal this is going to be and how much fun it's going to be when we get down there. So I can't wait. I think it's going to set on me uh, opening kickoff or kickoff return when I you know, turn around and see all the fans and stuff. Um, I think that's when it's going to hit me the most. Uh, for me, it's been two years, the past two years I've been down to Rome. I've been there for uh, as a game committeeman. It's kind of like a, a game administrator. You go down as a coach and make sure everything goes okay and smoothly for the coach. That's what I'm there for. So kind of a coach's perspective and uh, make sure that they don't have to deal with anything that, uh, that they don't want to um, at each location. Well, I've been down there for the national championship the past two years. And it's been really exciting. I told the people in Rome they really like me. Uh, they were saying, Coach, I, I wish you could be here. We were cheering for you last year and all this. I said, that's great. I said, well, next year maybe we'll make it. You know, we'll, we'll do it. We hope we, we hope we do. Because those guys, uh, a lot of the supporters there in the, in the national championship right now are administrators for um, shorter university. Was shorter college, which was used to be in our conference. So we're familiar with them, uh, and then we've got a lot of people that were pulling for us. And I'm just so glad we're able to make it to Rome uh, in their last year of the national championship. I think the year following, three years, is going to be in uh, Daytona Beach. And so we got a lot of people here on our campus who were saying, "You got to make it again next year." And the year after, we're going down to the beach. This is like Christmas vacation. So we're, we're excited to be there. And I'm thinking, you know, when I really realize it, when I get down there with all the atmosphere at the ball game and see the game field and what they've, they've painted on there and, uh, with the sponsorships and those type of things, it's going to be, uh, it's gonna be pretty neat, pretty neat for, for me as a coach, uh, for these players as well. Yeah, we're going to take off. We're going to do a couple of uh, – we've been, been really fortunate to have uh, some good practices already. 
and then uh, we'll have another good one today. And then we're going to have two on Monday and Tuesday. And we're going to let them guys take finals during the day. And we're going to practice more at night, okay, and have a couple of under the lights because the game will be at, in, at nighttime too. It'll start at 4.30, but it'll get dark shortly after. So that's good, not only that we're getting to practice um, uh, and avoiding, you know, interfering with finals, but uh, which some of the guys will have to take more than their average because they're going to have to get those corrected. Um, and uh, several teachers have been gracious enough to help them out to get their finals taken before we take off, which is important. But we're also going to get a chance to be under the lights a little bit, get used to that, catching kicks and punts and, and passes and uh, those type of things, seeing things that, you know, we hadn't played many night games. So that's important. But then Wednesday morning we're going to take off. We'll be down there. We're going to leave about 8 o'clock. We're going to get a practice in on, on the field turf field, not the game field, but on a field turf field, which is, uh, you know, the footing we'll be on in game day. Uh, on Wednesday, on Thursday, we'll, we'll practice at Darlington School, which is grass, but it's a really quality surface uh, right there in Rome. And then on Friday, we'll have a walkthrough, probably a, high, uh, a quick tempo walkthrough uh, on Friday at the game state, at the stadium uh, uh, where we'll play the ball game. And so that's all good. Uh, the guys will have plenty of time, several activities, but uh, we'll be able to go down there and make it a business trip as well. Uh, we need to enjoy it, but it'll be something that um, – I believe the guys will uh, make sure and stay focused because of the ultimate goal. And uh, I think that's very important. You know, the only reason I do well is because my defense linemen, you know, it's, it's, I believe it's a team effort. Uh, without my, you know, Zach Bull, Carson Newman, and, uh, and uh, Nick, Nick, J Nick Smith, sorry, um, I'm nothing. Uh, they they kind of funnel everything in and control everything, and I'm just kind of there to pick up the, uh, you know, the people that kind of get out from them. So, I mean, we uh, we've grown since the first game, uh, every game really, and especially since uh, the the Reinhardt game there. Um, but you know, we just we've got a mentality that you know we we know we're we know we're a decent defense and we will tackle good and everything. So. It's just you know communicating, and uh, we got like what nine seniors I think on the uh, defense. So I mean we've all been there, we've all seen uh, hard times, and you know so I think we're just really we're, we're veterans and you know ready to go. So you know every game I, at halftime I go around and shake uh, everybody's hand. You know tell them to keep it up, don't let off. You know. The gas and they, everybody kind of just looks at me, and, you know, shakes their head, yeah, and you know, shows that they're still in it. Um, that's, you know, that's kind of the only thing I really do. I make sure everybody's in the game during half after halftime because usually the first half is a dogfight, and the second half something clicks with us that we just, you know, the other teams are wearing out. We just keep going. So I think, you know, as my job, I, I try to get everybody prepared for that second half. I think it's just, I think it's a very important, you know, step to winning the game. And uh, we we usually stay strong and uh, finish the game out. So, well, for me, uh, <clears throat> I'm I'm pretty much a lead by example. I really don't get into all the speeches and the hoorahs. I leave that to uh, Dow Cross and Raquan Calhoun and Reggie Mary. That's a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> it's not every year you get to the national championship. So many things have to happen for it to. You know, work out this way, and uh, really, I'm just gonna enjoy it because you never know when you get back. You never know when you're gonna have a team this good again. So I'm just uh, gonna enjoy being around these kind of people and this good of a team.